Can everyone see my screen? I get a thumbs up from somebody? Anybody? Thumbs up? Great. Well, we are at seven o'clock, so why don't we go ahead and uh, get started. I want to first of all thank uh, Jim Cheney and Roger uh, Williams from the FAA for uh, first of all, allowing me to be on the, the FAA safety team, which I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, uh, Jim and Roger and I have been talking about this for a while. And I said, I really wanted to give, you know, some feedback and some, you know, some of the experiences that I've, I've had, you know, as an instructor and, you know, share that with the Georgia aviation community. So that's, that's why I'm here today. And when I was talking to Jim and Roger about this, I said, here are all the topics I want to, I want to hit. And they were, you know, they were like, that's a lot of content. So we're going to go pretty fast today. Um, and I think we could probably dive down and do, uh, you know, an hour on any of these, but um, we've all been cooped up in, in our houses for the most part for the past year. And, and uh, it's time to hopefully start getting back out there. So hopefully this will, you know, spark a little bit of uh, buzz and getting um, back flying and flying safely. So um, with that said, I do want to uh, have a special um, uh, shout out to my parents, Mike and Judy Ballard on the line. They got me started in aviation 30 plus years ago, so thank you for that. Uh, I also see several of my current students um, online, so you guys will be getting uh, some sort of extra credit for this. So um, I'm going to do my best to mind the chat. I'm, um, I'm going at this solo, so it's going to be uh, it might be a little tough for me to go back into the chat and into the presentation, but I'll do my best. But if you have a question, just hit that little uh, icon to raise your hand, and then you can unmute yourself and ask a question or or make a comment. That would that would be fantastic. So um, so let's let's get after it. Okay. So all right, first interview. Oops. Let me get full screen here and going. So quick. Uh, intro here. Uh, here's our agenda, what we're going to do. Who is this guy? Who's Nathan Ballard? Well, I'm a CFII uh, instrument ground instructor and I've got my commercial multi and uh, have been flying quite a while and I am a native Georgia born aviator. So I'm pretty proud of that born at Northside Hospital. I do need to say that while I am a flight instructor, I'm not your flight instructor. So if there's anything that you need to uh, uh, verify with your, your instructor, please do that. Uh, there's, there's, uh, parts of this uh, presentation that are, you know, my opinion and, you know, my observation from, from teaching. So please consult with your flight instructor for the final word. The other thing I do need to, to dis disclose is that there are several maps in here. So I don't think anybody would do it, but don't use those for navigation, right? So don't take a screenshot of a sectional in here and then go out and try to navigate with it because they are for illustration purposes only. So a uh, quick fun fact, I don't know if anybody has their certificate with them, but I've got mine right here, right? You can see that, I've got a couple of these. One thing I didn't know until recently, which I think is pretty cool, is that the, I guess the spars in the leading edge of the images on your certificates are made up not of lines, but of words, right? Maybe a lot of you guys uh, you know, knew that already, but I didn't know that until recently. And I thought, that's pretty cool. So uh, just a neat thing to, uh, share with your your friends or or other aviation uh, enthusiasts that the spars or, or parts of the wing are actually made up of words. So, and those words come from a speech back in 2002 by the uh, FAA administrator um, Marion Blakely. So, I thought that's pretty cool. So, there you go. Something you know, if you get nothing else out of it, now you know what uh, what image is on your certificate. So. It's, it's kind of distracting because I can see my, my parents in my window and my, they're like laughing and <laughs> I'll try to I'll do my best to keep going. So, all right, let's keep going. So what are we going to talk about tonight? Um, specific as, po as possible to Georgia, like uh, we're going to talk about Class Charlie and Delta operations, non-tower del airport, airport operations, big topic these days, which um, hopefully many of you heard about is runway incursion and excursion avoidance. Um, TFRs here in Georgia, special use airspace, air, airspace and then uh, practice area safety, which uh, as you know, many of you, if you're VFR pilots or, or in training, uh, you know there's a, lot of, there's a lot of airplanes here in Georgia, which we're gonna talk about here in, uh, um, uh, and look at some st statistics. And then lastly, how can we as aviators or aviation enthusiasts be a good neighbor to those who maybe aren't? So, all right. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about um, why I'm here. So I am a, a volunteer member of the FAA safety team or the FAST team. And you can see on the screen there that the mission, right, is to re reduce the 
nation's aviation accident rate by con you know, conveying safety principles and practices through training, outreach, and education, just like this, right? So, um, you know, when times are normal and there's not a pandemic, there's, uh, there's you know, uh, there's outreach in person at, at hangars and uh, at different events by members of the FAA safety team. And that's led by, like I said, Jim Cheney and uh, Roger Williams. So thank you guys for having me on that team. And I appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to do that here. The other thing that uh, must, I think it has to be mentioned and should be mentioned, let me move my window back, um, is, the, uh, is the WINGS program. So the WINGS program, uh, hopefully most of you know about that, but it's, a, it's, a, um, it, it's, a, it's an online program that helps address uh, accident factors, helps um, continue education, and there's a, a little bit of a, a, an award program too. You can get some um, nice benefits out of it, like uh, having it, it uh, be part of your your uh, flight review. Um, and I know I personally go on to the FAAsafety.gov uh, site every couple weeks or or more and go on and watch a video, right? Go on and you know how do you navigate the the New York, um, uh, you know how do you navigate around New York or the DC special flight rules area or if I was going to go down to Destin and, or Panama City, how do I navigate the, the corridor down there? It's all in the WINGS program. So um, it's a great place for education. So um, I encourage all my students to go there and, um, and help, um, help them get knowledge about what it means to be a safer a aviator. All right. And we'll keep going. So statistics. Um, Roger, I asked Roger for some, some statistics, and they are um, – you know, the data speaks what it is, right? If we look at why we, why do we um, want to, you know, have safety outreach programs like this, it's because we want these, these charts and these numbers to go down, right? If we look at, um, you know, last year, traffic was down. Sorry, I'm getting my uh, Zoom screen out of the way here. So traffic was was down, but um, because of the pandemic. But you, you see in that last line, like our fatalities were up. So that's certainly significant, and we want to, um, you know, at all as aviators, we want as soon as we take off, we want to have the same number of takeoffs and landings, right? We want to come back. So that's why um, uh, we do programs like this. Okay. Another one here. Um, so accidents and incidents, right? What are the factors? Um, these are very, very telling too, very telling also. Um, you know, we've got fuel, pilot-induced error, loss of power, um, components, our system is in, in loss of control. These are things that we want to address, right? Um, and that's up to all of us to do that, right? We want to be safe pilots and do the things to make us and our family and friends come home. Okay, so that's our, that's the layout for what we're going to hit today. So let's dive right in, and I, I know I'm going to talk a little bit quickly on here, but let's talk about Class Delta and Charlie operations. So this is a Georgia aviation-focused uh, uh, um, webinar, and you know we'll, we'll be spending some time in Atlanta, but you know we know Georgia is made up of other areas too, uh, you know, with um, other Class Deltas and Charlies. But here, it's hard to ignore the big giant Bravo, right? That's here in Atlanta. And around Atlanta, we've got a lot of uh, complicated airspace. And uh, those class Delta airports that surround the Bravo, it, they pose some challenges, right? For those VFR and IFR pilots, right? So as we get a bigger view of how big that class Bravo is, and then we start to look in the Northeast, we've got Gwinnett County, right? We've got DeKalb Peachtree Airport. We've got um, McCollum. We've got Dobbins. We've got um, Fulton County, they're all right there. And there's a lot of traffic in and out of those airports. So it's just a fantastic illustration of, you know, while we do have this big Bravo, honestly, like most of us aren't, you know, as general aviators probably aren't going to be in and out of the, you know, Hartsville Jackson that often, but we are going to be out of these uh, class Delta airports and other airports like Valdosta, right. Or Savannah, uh, Columbus, um, Macon. And we'll talk about those two. So what are, yeah, I did a, uh, here are the things that I wanted to talk about when we talked about Charlie and, and Delta operations. I did a, um, uh, I guess an informal poll or survey of several colleagues that are um, 
uh, air traffic controllers did post, uh, you know, social media, um, some of the air traffic controller forums. And I said, you know, what are the things that general aviation aviators can do that maybe aren't spelled out in the books um, to be safer, right? What can we do to make not only your job easier, but what can we do to be safer? So, and the number one thing that they said was approach and departure path awareness, right? Do you think about that, you know, as, as someone who's just going to go out and fly DFR? Maybe not. And I can say, you, you know, I, I'm not sure that I always paid attention to it, um, just as, you know, when I was a, a private pilot before. So let's look at some of those examples and why that's important. One thing that I do want you guys to think about while we uh, look at this is the mean elevation in Georgia is about 600 feet, right? And here in Atlanta, it's about 1,000 feet. Down by the coast, it's certainly lower, and up in the mountains, it's a little higher, but we're about 600 feet. When we start to think about, you know, what the average elevation is and what altitudes general aviation, you know, local traffic is going to fly at, 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet, right? Somewhere, that's usually about the sweet spot, especially if you're out training. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the Atlanta area. So I've made some highlights here that, again, this is not for navigation. This is just what I've found. Um, you know, if we look in the, this top right um, corner, we've got uh, Gwinnett County, we've got uh, PDK. These are all big practice areas for these airports. And then out to the west, we've got McCollum and, and County as well. Those are the places that uh, when you depart those airports, if you're a VFR pilot, you're probably gonna go in that direction, right? Unless you're, you know, it's different if you're on an IFR flight plan, but that's where you're gonna go. So where it gets interesting, when we talk about that, that sweet spot of where general aviation training is happening, right? It's in that three, you know, 2,500 to 4,500 um, foot um, elevation. Now let's, let's overlay the ILS approach plate for Petri to Cab on two one left. Here's that same quad or that same area. And that's, this is, if you can see up here in the top right, that's Gainesville. We've got Lawrenceville right here. And then this is, it's, this is Lake Lanier behind it. This is where you're going to see a ton of GA traffic, right? Especially training. So as your, uh, your corporate jets are coming in, they may be doing a visual or the ILS into, into um, PDK. They're gonna be coming in, if you look at the AB intersection, that's 3,000 feet and Sham is just below that. That's in the same you know, neck of the woods in altitude of where all the GA traffic is. So I know the ATC controllers do a fantastic job um, uh, you know, with, with traffic avoidance, but Maybe as you know, VFR pilots or general aviators, maybe instead of practicing all over Lake Lanier, you know, at 3,000 feet, maybe we go a little to the to the east, or maybe a little more to the north, right? Just something to be aware of. Do you have to do that? You don't, right? I mean, it's all it's you can do what you want out there, but we're trying to keep those those statistics right for Georgia. We want to keep those those numbers and and bars on that bar chart lower. Same thing, and we're not just gonna focus on it in the Atlanta area, right here in Macon. Uh, I was down in Macon uh, this past weekend with a student doing the ILS into, um, uh, into uh, Middle Georgia Regional and tons of traffic, right? And you've got Macon downtown, you got Robbins. This is where, this is the area that, um, you know, GA is, you know, gonna go if they're gonna go practice, right? So just be aware, and those altitudes are, the same really if you look at the the RNAV into nine into McCollum if we look at our altitudes here's that 3000 that magic number in 2700 and here's that that um, red quadrant that I've drawn, drawn on the sectional it's just something to think about and be aware of right be aware of what's happening not just with you but the traffic patterns of the bigger picture and I'll throw one more in there here's Columbus right we've got the RNAV into two four um, that's, you know, that would be a training area for, uh, for LaGrange Callaway. And over here, if you're on the ILS to six on the, um, Southwest side, you know, Auburn University Aviation has a huge training, um, program. So that's something again, to be aware of. So, um, I was kind of surprised when my ATC colleagues or, or, or friends and, and, um, said that and I was like, you know, that's a really good idea. I mean, they're doing a great job providing separation. But, you know, let's maybe make it easier on them and, and be safer, too. So, 
All right, so that's awareness. Um, the other thing that I think has can cause a, a safety issue, right, um, is communications in those in those uh, busier airspaces. So when we talk about being on the radio, a couple of the common errors or common things that I hear, you know, being on the, uh, in the air quite a bit is people that don't pause to listen to the frequency before they talk, right? Hey, I got, I'm, as soon as I get on, you know, 124.1, I'm hitting the button and I'm going to tell my life story, right? No, like get some situational awareness, right? Figure out what's happening. Maybe they're busy, maybe they're not, and then figure out what it is that you want to say, right? If they're really busy, maybe you just want to do a quick check-in or if they're not busy, um, you might, you know, give more information about where you are and what you want to do, right? So there is a time to be, uh, you know, to expand your message, but there's sometimes you need to be really brief. And then, you know, there's a lot of improper phraseology out there. You take that for what it is. I mean, um, if, a, if a controller has a hard time understanding what you mean, um, then that could cause a safety issue. The other thing that um, um, my ATC friends have, have told me is that uh, missing or bad position reports, right? Reporting that you're, uh, you know, 10 miles east of, um, of Columbus when you're actually 10 miles west, right? You know, that that's going to give them pause, right? They they need to know where you are. So, you know, let's be precise when um, we're reporting um, check-ins with our our Delta and Charlie Airport. So, so that's what uh, uh, as far as communications go that um, that could be improved or we or we need to watch out for. So, the other one that applies to both class. Charlie and Delta operations and uh, non-towered operations, which we'll talk about also, is flying at an improper altitude. So pattern altitude, I should say. So your typical uh, propeller airplane, you're going to fly at 1,000 feet AGL. Your turboprop or heavier um, uh, aircraft, you're going to fly at 1,500 and helicopters 400 or 500. So you know that's 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 there for a reason. Um, you know we we need to have that separation. And um, some of the folks I talked to said, you know, uh, you know, maybe somebody doesn't have their altimeter set right, and the other person doesn't have their altimeter set right, and all of a sudden that 500 feet of separation is now 200 feet, right? Or maybe they're not flying exactly what they think they are. So um, I'll show a stat in a minute, but uh, you know, we want to avoid any mid-air collisions that happen um, near an airport, and that's typically, you know, where they do happen. The other things to be aware of is, uh, you know, once you land, right, cross that whole short line and, and get off the runway. Um, those typically they can't give you that give that runway up to the next person until you're off the runway. So um, uh, that's also a common uh, complaint. Like, uh, go ahead and get off the runway, right? So and then pilot deviations. Uh, we don't want to talk about those or deal with those really, but uh, um, I'll show you here in a minute that the stats show that you know Georgia has its share of, of deviations so here's what I just talked about with the altitudes um, and whole short line and deviations and let me just show you those stats um, that you know those mid-air collisions at traffic pattern altitude right this is where they're happening right final and short final and, and, and on the runway so we just need to be extra cautious and um, like I teach my IFR students specifically like and and DFR like be precise right don't come in and fly your pattern altitude 200 feet low, right? Be precise, because it, it matters uh, not just to be a good aviator, but for safety. So, and then the stat that we all hate to um, look at or even think about, right? Getting that that dreaded, you know, possible pilot deviation. We, we don't want to hear those words, right? Come across the radio. Um, and Georgia here, and I don't know the exact start of this data that uh, Roger gave me, but I appreciate you um, giving, it, giving it to me, Roger, but, uh, you know, we've, you know, Georgia's here at number six. We certainly have a very active uh, um, aviation community and environment here. So um, maybe that number's not to be expected, but as we go forward, hopefully with presentations like this and others, and as we um, really continue to focus on safety, you know, maybe we can uh, continue, we can lessen that number, so. All right, we'll keep going. I, I'm not able to monitor the chat just by where I am I, at the end. I think um, I'll be able to sh um, close the screen and then we can, if we can just hold questions or comments to the end. Normally I'd pause here and, and let's talk or I could look at the chat, but just based on my single person Zoom setup, I'm just gonna keep going with this, so. All right, so non-towered operations. Um, a lot of things are out, you know, out there. You guys are all very much interested in safety and, and being, um, 
precise and accurate. So I think that's why you're here. I don't know anybody that hasn't been to uh, an airport in, Georgia, in you know, a non-towered airport in Georgia that hasn't heard people talking about the active or not saying where they are, or just coming into the pattern however they want to, right? Can you do that? I guess you can, but should you do that? Probably not. Um, that's that's where those you know we go back and look at those stats for um, uh, you know where accidents occur. It's around airports on on clear days, um, and that's if we if we do things that are predictable, right? If we enter the traffic pattern like we should, then we are going to be a lot more safe. If we announce where we are with the the appropriate uh, phraseology, like you know left downwind or left base that's going to help, right? It will help because as you know, as you fly into an uncontrolled field, like you should be building that, that, that situational awareness of what's happening at the airport. And it's hard to do when other people's people aren't, aren't, aren't uh, speaking, you know, correctly, or, or I, I guess I should say not, you know, they're just ignoring, you know, what's the proper um, way to um, navigate in and out of an airport. So, um, Left and right patterns, uh, I see that quite a bit. I mean, if we look at, uh, you know, someplace like Covington, right, which is just uh, southeast of it, um, Atlanta, right, there's a right pattern here on 2-8. So I can't tell you how many times I've gone into Covington and seen people doing left traffic on 2-8. I'm sure you all have experienced similar things, right? It, it certainly happens. The other thing as we get into talking to um, runway incursion and excursion, like taxi diagrams, I see when people get to a non-towered airport, you know, they may or may not have studied, like where are they gonna go, right? I mean, that's, you need to know where you're gonna go once you get to the airport. So I'm sure with all, you know, this is probably common sense to everyone, but I, hopefully it helps uh, reiterate the message of while we're doing this, uh, which is safety. So the one thing I will say in the aim, you know, pilots are encouraged to use that standard traffic pattern if they choose to, as if you choose to execute a straight in approach, right, you should not disrupt the flow of arriving or departing traffic. I mean, we all know the, the you know, the funny story of not funny story, but, uh, you know, you know, five small aircraft in the pattern and then, you know, someone blows in either not talking and they're, you know, large plane or whatnot. And, uh, you know, you shouldn't take advantage of that just because you're uh, a bigger or faster plane. So, so. All right, let's keep going. So this is one of the hot topics um, over the last few years. Um, runway incursion has has certainly been big and excursion is becoming much more of a, a talked about. So uh, I'll hit play on that. So if we look at, if we look at it, you know, this overhead view of, of Peachtree DeKalb, right? Um, it's a very busy airport and there's places here that where we could, you know, have runway incursion or excursion. So what is an incursion? Well, it's any aircraft at an airport, um, um, any occurrence, right? Where there's, you know, a plane or a person or a vehicle should not be in a protected area um, that's designated for landing or takeoff, right? So an excursion would be uh, defined as a veer off or overrun from, an over, uh, from a, a runway surface. So that's maybe, you know, going off the end of the runway or going off the side of, of the runway. So um, that's what we want to focus on. Like we want to minimize these incursions and excursions. So the FAA has um, designated certain hotspots. I'm sure many of you have heard of this, but if you haven't, it's, it's quite uh, useful to know. It's a hotspot is this area on an airport um, uh, with a history of collision or, uh, or runway incursion. So that's where we need heightened attention uh, by pilots, by vehicles, by people, and to make sure that that issues don't happen. That video fly, over flying um, the Cap Peach Tree, like there's three hot spots uh, at uh, PDK. If you've flown out of there, I'm pretty sure you probably know what they are because there's a lot of traffic in and out of those three spots. So we look here at uh, Columbus. So Columbus has two on their field. Um, these are areas to be to watch out for. And I encourage everyone, you know, as they are going in and out of a field, especially a new one, right? Take a look, right? Take a look at your chart supplement, take a look in far for flight or, or Garmin pilot and see where there those are and take your time and be cautious. Here in Georgia, you know, we've got the three that are listed for, for DeKalb Peachtree, which I mentioned. Um, and you know, the, here's the two for Columbus, like uh, hotspot one is remain vigilant of converging taxiway ge geometry and the same, um, similar for hotspot two. So, um, 
they're there for a reason, right? Something's probably happened there. So let's be careful. So, so we talked about hotspots. What can you do to prevent some incursion? Uh, the number one thing, well, maybe not the number one thing, but one of the things like slow down and ask for help. If you're at a towered field, like slow down. If you're not sure, take your time, ask for progressive taxi instructions and get the help that you need. So you're not an, in, a, in a position to, um, to uh, interfere with another aircraft or vehicle or person or, or go on the runway when you shouldn't. So always follow AT, ATC instructions, check your notams, uh, and you'll see that um, on several more slides here to check your notams. Um, know the difference, and I'll, this is the last bullet, like what's the, what's the difference between an instruction and a clearance, right? So um, if, you're, if you receive a hold short instruction, that is something you must comply with, right? If you receive a, a clearance to take off, that is, you know, up to you. You don't have to take off, but you, you, you can. So those instructions received by uh, ground control are, are super important, um, especially in, at complicated airports, so, you know, our Charlies and our Deltas and our, um, you know, even our, of course, our, our big Bravo at Hartsfield Jackson. So um, I want to talk a little bit about, and lights on, be visible, right? Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, turning your lights on so everybody can see you. And, um, but I did want to hit on expectation bias. And this is something that, um, you know, I've, I'm guilty of it. I'm sure we all are, all are, right? You get the same taxi instructions every time, but then that one time uh, you, you get something different and you don't pay attention to it. Next thing you know, right? You maybe you're crossing a runway you shouldn't have, or, uh, you're, you're where you shouldn't, you don't want to be. So um, avoid it at, at all costs, right? So I'm a huge proponent of um, writing it down and mapping out what are your taxi instructions every time you're going to, you're going to move that airplane. So here's an example, right? In Athens, right? If you're at the FBO, uh, right in the center of the screen and you get a taxi instruction to taxi to runway two, it's, uh, you know, alpha, bravo three, bravo, cross two seven, right? It's not a long way to go, but there's, you know, you have to follow instructions because maybe something's happening. Just, I, I wouldn't even speculate on what could be happening, but follow instructions. And if you're not sure when it's time to cross uh, two seven, I'd stop and, and wait. So these are the, the simple things as we get um, uh, sometimes maybe distracted or, or, you know, wanting to program a GPS, right? Uh, you start to not take your time and that's when these incursions happen, so certainly want to avoid those. And then specifically more about excursion avoidance, right? So uh, one of the lessons that I've learned, like the plane is still landing until you're off the runway. Um, I had a video in here queued up and I thought, well, maybe I better not play that because I don't know the who was in it and I wouldn't want to name names, but you, you may have seen it circulating on YouTube or wherever, but uh, you know, it was, it was someone landing in a, in a, in a, a retractable gear airplane. As soon as they landed, you know, they're shoving flaps up and, and next thing you know, they grab the gear handle. Right. And so the gear goes up and, and, and they have an accident there on the runway. So I think it's best practice to keep the, the plane in the configuration it is, uh, or follow your POH of course. Um, but try not to make any, any, you know, drastic movements until you're off the runway. Right. Focusing on center line, we land on, on runways that maybe aren't so wide and uh, we've got crosswinds and, you know, you know, if you're already, you know, uh, not on center line and you get a, a crosswind gust that pushes you off into the grass, well, that's an excursion, right? We don't want to do that and that's going to be a lot of damage to your airplane. So you need to plan for ad adverse weather conditions, you know, water, hopefully not so much ice on the runway down here um, and, and crosswind, like I mentioned. And then the long lost art of uh, dealing with performance charts, right? Can you safely land at the airport that you want to go to, right? Is that runway too short? Um, again, if you want to, you know, spend lots of time or not a lot of time on YouTube, you'll find, or any video platform, you'll find lots of uh, aircraft running off the end of the runway. You know, maybe, maybe that was a factor. You know, I don't want to speculate, but uh, who knows? Maybe they, you know, they should not have been landing there. So let's keep going. I know this is a lot and I think uh, Jim and Roger were, were right. We could spend an hour on any of these, but we'll keep going if you guys are good with it. So, All right, let's talk about airspace in Georgia, right? We got our Bravo and our Charlie and our Delta, TFR, special use airspace. So 
what does that really mean to us um, as aviators? The Bravo, Charlie Delta, right? We want to be, um, you know, I'll lead with that last bullet, right? Let's talk to ATC, right? ATC is there to, you know, to provide a service. And, and if they can do that, then they are more than happy to. I don't, I haven't talked to a controller that said, don't call me, right? If you have a question or you need help navigating my airspace, I've never heard somebody say, I'm, I'm too busy or I don't want to talk to you. They may be too busy to talk to, you know, if you're going into Hartsville, Jackson, but you know, if you, if you have a question or you need help navigating the airspace, give them a call. So the messages here on, on these, you know, larger airspaces are, you know, be aware, be conservative and respect the airspace, right? Don't skirt it. Don't try to clip the corner, but you look at two of my examples here. Um, sorry about that. Um, you know, here we got, you know, the Bravo in Atlanta again, you know, leaving Southeast out of PDK or leaving uh, Southwest out of Fulton County or McCollum, right. To get to those practice areas. Um, there's a very real opportunity to cut the Bravo right at that 3000 foot, um, corner. Right. And I promise you they're, they're watching, right. Yeah. So, um, we want to avoid those areas, right? Just be mindful of the airspace, be conservative. If you're, if you're, um, your Garmin or your four flight, what, or whatnot says, Hey, you're, you're a good 25 feet away from, from the Bravo. You might want to build a little buffer in, right? You don't want to get, you don't want to get tagged and then uh, get a phone call later. So that's really the message there is just be aware of those areas. Um, this is one of my, well, not favorites, but uh, whenever Roger presents an, you know, an FAA fast team um, uh, orientation, he usually talks about the, the airspace down in Savannah and Fort Stewart, right? Because that is some funny looking airspace. And if you get into that restricted area when it's hot, then you're going to get a call, right? It's going to be a violation, most likely. And if you try to go under the Charlie here, you've got some massive towers. So are you going to try to skirt by there and maybe hit, you know, the restricted areas here, or are you going to try to, uh, you know, play slalom through the, uh, the towers? I hope not. Right. Call ATC, right. Call Savannah and, uh, get some help getting through there. If you're going to go to the Southeast. So, um, that comes up every time. And I just find it fascinating, you know, that, that you know, you think the airspace is one thing and then if you don't pay attention to it and, uh, Next thing you know, you're, you're in the wrong place and we certainly don't want that. So let's talk a little about, about TFRs, temporary flight restrictions. Um, you'll look here, we had one last week um, and it was quite complicated. I know there was a lot of, uh, you know, it actually moved around several times, but um, I, w I hope that, I I'm sure for this audience, right, you're getting, you know, notifications on your phone, you're looking at ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot or Sky Vector, whatever tool you use, right? There's plenty of, and, or TFR, uh, the TFR.gov, FA.gov site, like there's plenty of ways to know, but it never hurts. If you don't know, check, right? Because that's, that, uh, that certainly would be an exciting uh, escort from the fighter, from the F-16s. So um, just be aware of that, right? We, we have those for all the times for VIPs and, you know, the, the Brave Stadium or, or Athens for Georgia or Georgia Tech here in Atlanta. So watch out for those. We've got those for air shows. Uh, there was one last weekend for the race. Um, I'm not sure what race it was uh, down in Hampton. So uh, just check your notams, right? I mean, there's really, there'll probably be, not be a very good excuse for, for, for busting a, you know, a, a POTUS TFR, right? So uh, let's, let's be aware of that. And if you have friends that don't know what a TFR is, right, maybe tell them, right? <laughs> so um, other things that we have here in Georgia, we, we have a lot of special use Air Force. You got your military areas, your controlled firing areas, alert areas, restricted, prohibited areas. I mean, I could keep going warning areas. Uh, we, we have it all, right? So you want to check your notams. And if you're not sure, talk to our friends at ATC, right? They'll, they'll help us determine what's hot, right? Or make sure you get a proper briefing before you go on your flight to make sure you know if you should or shouldn't be in an area. If we look down here at uh, Moody and, and Valdosta, right? We've got all kinds of stuff going on. We've got the, the MOAs and we've got some restricted airspace here. We've got some Delta airspace here, right? Um, it's just better to know, right? I mean, as a VFR pilot, can you fly through a MOA? Yeah, sure you can, but would you like to know um, if, if there's going to be a lot of activity there. Absolutely. I would, I would want to know. So um, maybe, maybe 
check those things before you just uh, go out and fly on a, on a Sunday afternoon. So, all right, so far so good. I hope we've got two more topics and if I check my watch, it looks like we're pretty much on time. Thanks for everybody's patience and attention so far. So um, training safety, I wanted to address this one because, you know, we, we only looked at that chart earlier, Georgia's, you know, number six on the list for, uh, you know, really for aviation activity. There's a lot of activity here, especially training. We've got, you know, pretty good weather and um, a lot of people want to fly and learn to fly here, which we love. So uh, practice areas, especially on the weekend, especially, you know, like now uh, in spring, it's getting really crowded out there. Congested practice airports, your, your winders, your Gainesville's, your LaGrange, your, uh, um, I, you know, I can keep going on and on all over the state, right? There's a lot of planes in and out of there. So we just need to be real, we need to be careful and extra vigilant so we don't uh, 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 have an accident or incident. So we talked about proper altitudes earlier. Uh, I won't go through that again, but those are really important, especially around the airport, but also not just around the airport, but uh, when we're out, you know, doing training maneuvers, it's appropriate to pick a VFR altitude, right? You know, 3,500 or 4,500, depending on your direction. You know, what, you know, pay attention to that. It's, it's better to do that than just be all over the place, right? And you've got IFR traffic that might be at 4,000 or, you know, 5,000, 6,000. So just be aware of it. So one thing that, um, um, you know, I've flown in different parts of the country and, um, I think maybe this is an area we could do better here in Georgia is that air to air communication in practice areas. Um, um, you know, announcing who you are and what you're doing, right? If I, you know, I'm a, I'm a tan Cessna over Lake Lanier doing, you know, steep spirals at, you know, 5,500 feet. I mean, that's helpful information to other, other training um, uh, airplanes in the area. So I know some of that and some of those things are announced uh, locally. You know, I think those things are announced like that one's announced at Gainesville quite a bit. But, you know, that 12275 is that uh, that uh, frequency we should be using. I won't harp on it again, but, uh, you know, that first slide about IFR approaches and departures, like be aware of that, you know, maybe don't practice in the the, uh, the approach end of uh, two one left at uh, PDK. Uh, big fan of clearing turns, of course, if you're going to be practicing, I mean, uh, it's not really a, a hassle when you can bake them into your maneuvers, right? Um, um, and you want to be seen. We don't want to. We don't want to be uh, out there and not be seen. It's a lot easier to see wings as they, you know, turn 90 one way or or in 90 the other than it is just to not see them at all. So, and then you know, a, a lot of our airplanes have ADSB out. Some don't have ADSB in. However, you know, you can still benefit from that technology. Uh, I know that I'm personally in and out of uh, many different airplanes and I don't always know what type of equipment they have, but, uh, you know, I purchased a, a four flight, you know, mini century device and it's been, it was probably the best few hundred dollars I've ever spent because I know I'm going to be able to see traffic, you know, electronically in any plane that I'm in. So um, if you're in a position where you don't have, uh, you know, that ADSB in and you can't see traffic on, on your avionics, then, um, that might be a worthwhile purchase. I recommend all of, uh, the, the people that I fly with um, have that. So. so that's training safety. And uh, shout out to my son, Jack, in that bottom right picture. He's uh, getting close to solos. So hopefully uh, that will be here any week now. So. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about here um, is uh, being a good neighbor, right? Um, this is something I'm not sure that we really think about very much as, as aviators, right? Um, I was speaking with another uh, fast team rep about this topic uh, a couple of days ago. And one of the things he said, I was like, you're right. Not everyone loves airplane noise. We do, right? When we hear an airplane, guess what we're going to do? We're going to look up and look outside and see what it is. Uh, but not everybody loves airplane noise. So um, where, where appropriate or where you can, you know, follow some, some noise abatement practices. I know, you know, PDK, for example, has, has some very specific ones, um, you know, that should be followed. And, you know, if you're flying out of LaGrange or, or, or um, Monroe, right, I mean, maybe do, do those similar things, right? Follow those standard practices, right? Follow those, uh, you know, standard traffic patterns. So you're not all of a sudden over somebody's house that has never uh, seen a plane before because you're doing right traffic 
at, at a runway, you should be doing left traffic. Um, just be courteous, right? And um, the other thing that we often do in training is, uh, you know, we do ground reference maneuvers or emergency practice. And there's the, you know, the cliche, the farmer's field that we're always going to land in, right? Well, those people uh, are, um, <laughs> you know, they may or may not appreciate uh, a, you know, planes coming to use the same area all the time. So if you hear about something like that, be respectful and, and go to another area, right? The other one that um, I'll mention, and, and that's just, that's from some conversations I had with some operators out of uh, DeKalb Peachtree was uh, be respectful of altitudes over congested areas, right? So um, to that first bullet, right? Not everyone loves airplane noise. Well, you know, there's a lot of, there's people now that have, uh, you know, flight radar 24 or, uh, you know, they got traffic and if they are going to pull out their binoculars and, and look at your tail number and you're 500 feet over their house instead of, you know, a thousand, you know, that could be a problem. So follow the rules, right? Respect those altitudes where you should be. And, uh, you know, there won't be a problem. I mean, a lot of people that live in or around airports, like right, they know it, right? They, they moved to, to a place that, you know, has an airport and there's going to be some noise. Um, but, you know, as long as we as Georgia aviators are being responsible and following the rules, um, then, you know, there should not be any problem with that. So um, what are some ways that we can help or you can help um, the safety, the safety, you know, world or uh, environment that we're looking for? You know, that's that's up to us, right? The fact that you all are here on a Tuesday night uh, watching a webinar about safety in Georgia is, is huge. And it, the more you can help further that message, the safer we're all gonna be. Because this, you know, it can't just be the, the dozens of us that are on here. Like we need our flying clubs and flight schools and um, uh, online uh, friends and, and colleagues to, to, to push that message too, right? So help spread the word if you can. The other thing you can do, right, is stay proficient. We'll talk about proficiency versus currency. I know that's a, a topic we've heard quite a bit about, right? Um, stay proficient, right? It's, it's one thing to be legal, but to be uh, good uh, and proficient is, is certainly much better. So uh, fly when you can, and uh, if you need help, then contact your local CFI and, uh, and stay proficient, right? That will certainly help our accident or incident figures, right? Um, and the other thing is keep attending these wings and fast programs. It's uh, um, I, I hope there will be many more. And like I said in the beginning, you know, we could spend an hour on probably any of these topics. Um, this is hopefully meant to be a, a good overview of some of the, the things that I've observed from my flying here in Georgia. Um, but keep keep attending. I mean, Roger and Jim and the, the whole fasting put on presentations, you know, weekly or monthly, and they're fantastic. I mean, I've learned so much about uh, uh, about me mechanical issues that I didn't know before. I mean, there's just the topics are, are, are fantastic. So keep doing those. And the last thing I'll leave you with, right, we're doing this, right, to bring these accidents and these incidents down. This is, you know, this is what we had from for 2020. Uh, and uh, we're looking to have those numbers go down. And that happens through outreach like this and being safe. So um, with that, um, I think I'm going to call it. Let me see if I can get my screen up back to, uh, I'll stop sharing here and I'll see if there's anything in the chat or if anybody had any comments. Um, let's see. David Brown is wondering about my, uh, my accent. Well, I can turn it on or I can turn it off. So right now it's kind of in neutral position, I guess. I don't know. So, um, so Anyway, anybody have any comments or, or questions or, or feedback for, for us or any good stories they want to share? And it's okay if you don't, that's all right. But I've always learned to wait five to seven seconds before we, we shut it down. So, um, you know, Ed's got one. So Ed Wood said, you know, be careful of canceling IFR and congested airspace. Agreed, yep. Canceling yeah. while in class, Charlie, um, underlying the, the Bravo, that could be violent. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Okay. What's the board over your right shoulder in the background? That is a, uh, it's, it's called a METAR map. It's a program, uh, it's a open source uh, weather Raspberry Pi. This is kind of geek stuff here, but it goes out and gets the weather at all these airports across the country and it, 
puts them on a on a map. So if anybody's interested in doing that, there's a open source project out there and it's actually not that hard to do. So good question, dad. <laughs> All right. So Roger, uh, Roger Williams, our, our, our program manager, right? So beware the, the, uh, the UAS operating in class golf or echo airspace. Absolutely. So, um, and then we've got Russ saying, good job. Thank you, Russ. Appreciate that. The support is always so. I think with that, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and call it a night. And thank you all for attending. And uh, look, hopefully, we'll do more of these in the future. And uh, if you have any uh, feedback, then um, always welcome to receive it, uh, positive or negative. So thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great uh, rest of your Tuesday. See you later. Thank you. Thanks. Amazing. Great job. Yeah, appreciate it. Great job, man. Thank you much, buddy. Nice. Bye-bye.